Welcome back. Last time we encoded values using Avro and the AVSC library, published those encoded values to Kafka, and then consumed them and decoded them. You can click here to watch that video. Avro gives us some great benefits. It validates data when it's produced, it documents data for the consumers, and it's fairly space efficient. But this approach has one problem that we didn't discuss last time. The consumer must use the exact same schema to decode a message that the producer used when encoding it. It can be difficult to make sure that the producer and the consumer are using the same schema. There may be many teams consuming a message and they can be consumed much, much later than they were produced. Maybe the people that produced the message are not even around anymore to ask. Furthermore, each message could be produced and encoded using a different schema. So you really have to know per message what schema was used, and that gets really tricky. Schema Registry solves this by providing a central repository to store schemas. In this repository, every schema is assigned a unique ID. When encoding messages, the ID of the schema used to encode it is embedded in the message itself. This way, when a consumer is decoding the message later, the ID can be read from the message, the schema can then be fetched from the schema registry, and the message can be decoded with confidence. Schemas are cached to ensure adequate performance. There are SDK libraries for many languages, including Node, to make all of this very simple. Let's get started. We're going to start with the code that we ended on last time. You can see the video description for links to these uh, repositories. And uh, so let's look through what we're starting with. We have a Docker Compose file that gives us mainly Kafka here. And we're gonna add to that right away because of course we need schema registry. It's worth noting while we're in here that schema registry depends on Zookeeper uh, because it is distributed and Zookeeper takes care of that. And it uses Kafka as its data store. So that's where the, the schemas are actually kept. Uh, next, let's look at the package JSON. Main thing to notice here, last time we installed Kafka JS, we'll need that again. We also were working with ABSC to encode with Avro directly last time. This time we will not be doing that, so let's get rid of that. And let's go ahead and install the schema registry library that we will be using instead. And take note that uh, this library that I'm installing does use ABSC under the hood. It's just, it's just adding some extra conveniences for us. <clears throat> and finally, this is the code we were starting with last time. So just a quick review, we had a type and then we use that the AVSC library to, you know, to create the type, but then also to encode the value before sending it in, before producing it. And then once again, when consuming that value, we use the same uh, schema, that same type to decode the value. So let's start by just making sure we're able to run here. Great, now let's bring it up. Next, Let's get rid of this Avro import, this ABSC library. And instead we are going to import schema registry. Okay. And now let's go ahead and connect to schema registry. I guess this is a misnomer. We're not actually connecting now. We're just creating an instance uh, of, this, of this class, configuring it. All right. Now the next thing we want to do is instead of creating this type in memory and just using it locally, 
we're going to send it up to schema registry. And to do that, let's first just extract the schema out as a JSON object here. <clears throat> and to be valid for use with schema registry, we have to give it a name. I'll just call this animal and a namespace. Once we have that, we can wait registry.register and you give it the uh, schema and it needs to be JSON formatted. You also have to tell it what type it is. And for that, I need to import schema type up here. And the reason for that is that schema registry supports protobuf as well as Avro. Now, when we register the schema, it gives us back an ID. And that's the ID of the schema. We'll need this so that we can embed this ID into the message when we encode it. Let's go ahead and take our message payload and put that in a separate variable. And then we're going to use the schema registry now to encode the payload. And it requires the ID and then of course the payload. And that's it. Now we can come down to our consumer. So to decode this value, now we'll use the register once again, or registry, and we just call it decode. And this time we don't have to give it anything because it will actually be able to pull the ID out of the message as we discussed earlier. Uh, it is potentially having to do some IO if that isn't if that schema is not cached yet. So we do have to await this call. And in theory, this will work. Let's cross our fingers and see. Uh, I do have to yarn to install. Oh, did I already do that? I already did that. So I'm just going to call node index. Oh, I did forget one thing. In Avro, some types are simple, like string, but other types like enum require some additional configuration. And when you do this, you have to give it a name or else schema registry does not like it. So let's call this animal kind. Oh, it looks like I, uh, I forgot to await up here when we're encoding. That's the same reason as when we were decoding. We potentially have to fetch the schema in order to make this call. <clears throat> so we have to await that. Let's try one more time. And there we go. We have a dog named Albert. That's all for today. I'm Dustin McQuay. See you next time.